Welcome to worship on this, the seventh Sunday of Epiphany. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray. O Lord Jesus, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, may we so love. Where there is injury, pardon, and where there is despair, hope. Grant, O Divine Master, that we may seek to console, to understand, and to love in your name. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to Luke in the sixth chapter. We continue with the reading of Jesus' sermon. And Jesus said, But I say to you, listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not even withhold your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you. And if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as ha you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that? If you lend to those for whom you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much. But love your enemies. Do good and lend, expecting nothing in return. Your reward will be great, and you will be called the children of the Most High God. For God is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, even as God is merciful to you. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure you get back. This is the gospel of the Lord. Christians are called to aspire to God's mercy and not just settle for human mercy. As we continue through the gospel of Luke, we've been following Jesus as he calls his disciples he teaches and heals along the way. Last week, we began to hear from his sermon on a level place. Matthew and Mark call it the Sermon on the Mount. And Jesus teaches, blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh and blessed are you when people hate you, and when they exclude you, revile you, and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven, for that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. This week we continue into the heart of Jesus' sermon. It's all about God's mercy. Jesus is calling folks to live lives of mercy, not just human mercy, but to aspire to live out God's mercy. We are told that Jesus came down with them and stood on a level place with the disciples and the crowd of people. Matthew and Mark tell us that Jesus saw the crowd and went up on the mountain. Now, this does not mean that the gospel writers are at odds as to where the physical place was that Jesus stood. It's more about their perspective in telling Jesus' story. Matthew has Jesus up on a mountain like the prophets of old, whereas Luke sees Jesus coming down from a high place and being on level ground with the disciples and the people. 
Jesus comes down to their level. Jesus comes to the level of the people, symbolizing that they are all in this together, and especially symbolizing in this season of Epiphany that God comes down to be with us. In first century Palestine, there was a wide gap between rich and poor. The Roman occupying armies ruled it over the people and pontificated from high places. The Roman armies took the best of the crops, the best of their livestock, and charged them high taxes. The religious leaders sided with the occupying army so they could keep their riches and power, and the average people were belittled and powerless. Jesus wants to show that God is with the people, on their level, and an equal place. We all are in need of God's mercy, rich, poor, weak, and powerful. God is for us. In the kingdom of God, all are equal and stand on level ground as we need God's mercy. Jesus is ushering in this new kingdom of God, the reign of God's love. The sermon on the level place is an aspiration for that kingdom to come and for us to live out God's mercy. Jesus talks of the golden rule, you know it, do to others as you would have them do to you, which is really a much older saying than the Gospels. Historically, it comes from, from mystics in Persia. It was about what was fair. But Jesus uses the example to think about God's mercy, that God is more than fair. More than don't do anything to anybody that you wouldn't want to have done to yourself. But God's mercy is greater than that. Jesus' mercy is to show others to go beyond the golden rule, to place others ahead of us. Jesus goes on to define God's mercy in terms of what would God do? If you love those for lo who love you, what challenge is that? Even sinners do that, Jesus says. Jesus says to go beyond, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, and pray for those who abuse you. Now, that's not easy, but it's not easy for God to love us sometimes. Jesus goes on, if you lend to those who you know are going to pay you back with interest, what good is that? But he said, God's mercy is love your enemies, do good and lend expecting nothing in return. Be merciful as God is merciful, and you will be called children of the Most High God. Do not judge, do not condemn, forgive and be merciful aspire to reflect God's mercy. Now, Jesus is talking about living differently. In Matthew's longer version of this sermon, Jesus often said, now you have heard it said this, but now I tell you, Jesus is calling to a new way of living, a new way of being, living out God's mercy and aspiring to be merciful. And we see, especially in the history of the early Christian church, that they lived this out. The early Christian church after Pentecost did not have an evangelism program. They didn't go knock on doors and, and ask them about Jesus. They didn't advertise. They lived differently. They aspired to reflect God's love and mercy in their lives. They cared for widows and orphans. They lived out the things Jesus directed in his sermon. They gave to the poor. They prayed for their enemies. They fed the hungry. Alan Kreider, in his book, The Patient Ferment of the Early Church, writes that people began to take notice after Pentecost that Christians were doing and living differently. And they would often ask, why do you do that? And Christians would explain, it's because of God's love and mercy for you and for me. And people joined. 
There's even some evidence that the Roman government tried to create a similar kind of program of caring for widows and orphans, but it failed miserably because it had no heart. Other writers have suggested live questionable lives. Live a life in such a way that you show God's mercy and people will say, why do you live that way? And it gives us an opportunity to talk about God's love and mercy. The early Christians lived out this sermon and lived differently to show God's mercy. Jesus comes to be with the people on a level place and proclaims the kingdom of God and God's mercy for us. The enemy of God's mercy is individualism. God calls us to live for each other, and Jesus has given his life for the sake of the world, all of us. Individualism says, I am the ruler of my domain, the captain of my ship. Individualism says, Jesus is my savior, where Jesus says, God so loved the world that he sent his son. I came that you all will have life, plural, and have it abundantly. God's work in the world is always communal for others and not just for me. There's been much individualism in when it comes to COVID-19. Some would say we're being forced to wear masks or it's beyond my freedom that I don't have to get a vaccine. But what would God's mercy say? God's mercy would say, care for other people. Protect others as you protect yourself. Paul outlines it best when he says, yes, we are free, but our freedom has limits. When it hurts someone else, when it causes someone else to stumble, we should not do it. Our goal, says Paul, is to build up one another. Romans 14, 19. Let us then pursue the things that make for peace and mutually build up one another. It's about living differently in the world, aspiring to God's mercy. Show others the mercy that God has shown to us. It's more than just doing the right thing. It's doing the godly thing. Jesus calls us to live out mercy. God's mercy. Recently, I heard a wonderful story about living out God's mercy. Many of you are familiar with uh, Mother Teresa of Calcutta. And someone told this story about her and mercy. She ministered to the poor and dying on the streets of Calcutta in the worst parts of the city, especially those with HIV, AIDS, leprosy, and tuberculosis. One old man was close to death and was brought into her home for the dying. Daily, she would wash his wounds and speak to him of Jesus and his mercy every day. She would repeatedly, he would repeatedly push her away and ask to die alone. She would every day, or more than once a day, wash his wounds, tell him Jesus loved him and had mercy on him and was with him. And he continually pushed her away. Soon his breathing began to be labored and the pains in his body grew worse, and he knew that the end was near. Mother Teresa continued to wash his wounds and told him that Jesus loved him and had mercy on us all, and he looked up and said, if this mercy you show is what Jesus is like, then I do believe. Do we always get it right? No. Will being merciful be easy all the time? No. But it's our calling to follow the mercy of God, to aspire to practice God's mercy because God has been merciful to us. Amen. This, let us pray. The Spirit of the Lord is poured out upon us in abundance, so we are bold to pray for the church, the world, 
and all that God has made. You teach us to love our neighbors and enemies alike. Encourage your church to follow the lead of your love, especially when it is risky or difficult. Help us to show mercy just as we have received mercy. God of grace, hear our prayer. Nurture fields that lie dormant, resting until it's time to bloom again. Bless farmers and all who cultivate fields and urban gardens. Give favorable weather for planting. Bring forth from buried seeds an abundant harvest and guard against famine and disease. God of grace, hear our prayer. Look upon our world with mercy that we delight in the abundance of peace. Protect all those who are marred by war and civil unrest. Release political prisoners and amplify the voices that challenge us to seek forgiveness and pursue nonviolence. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your people cry out for mercy. Console hearts that long for forgiveness. Mend broken relationships. Heal bodies that suffer from chronic pain or illness. Strengthen and deliver all those whose spirits are troubled especially those that we might name in our hearts this day. God of grace, hear our prayer. You bind us together into one family. Teach us to forgive one another and to solve conflicts with humility and patience. Best bless families of all shapes and sizes and kinds and show love to those who are lonely or grieving. God of grace, hear our prayer. Heal the tensions in the Ukraine. Help us to find ways to overcome our disagreements about masks and vaccines and help us to live out God's mercy in our lives. God of grace, hear our prayer. We praise you for the saints who have inherited the fullness of your kingdom as you have raised them to imperishable and eternal life. Sustain us in faith by the promise of your resurrection. God of grace, hear our prayer. Since we have such great hope in your promises, O God, we lift these and all our prayers to you in confidence and faith through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God who leads you in pathways of righteousness, who rejoices over you and who calls you by name, bless your going out and your coming in today and forever. And we go now in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go with Christ into a weary world. Share the good news. Thanks be to God.